Toongrin.com Is anyone... <gasps> Hello everyone, I'm Obnoxious and this is... <laughs> Welcome, I am Harold, Harold the Devil, and this is Spooky Corner. For you see, it is that time of year again, the year of goblins, goats, schools, true monster mayhem, and dentists with sharp instruments that give your teeth such a poking they bleed. <coughs> so for the next two weeks in October, me and Obnoxious and I guess why boy will be bringing you Halloween treats and reviews, hosted by me. Hey, I thought I was going to host a spooky corner. I mean, I am actually a ghost. It just fits! Oh shut up and get in the spirit of the holidays obnoxious with tricks and treats of all sorts. Like this one. <laughs> now with that bothersome thing out of the way, let's start our spooky corner right as we review Coraline. Ah, uh, Coraline. Been meaning to cover this one for years now. I've watched it every Halloween the past two years to run a spotlight on it, but at the same time, the proper words didn't come to me. I was enthralled by the breathtaking visuals, the family-friendly gothic story, and our strong and sassy main last Coraline. But something was stuck for me. Something about this movie wasn't clicking together for me. Well, no time like the present to try it again and find out why I felt that. So, what's the story? Based off the novel by Neil Gaiman of the same name, Coraline starts the titular Coraline, played by Dakota Fanning, as she and her parents move into the Pink Palace apartments, and she quickly is bored with her new surroundings, her mother and father not helping as they have their noses buried in their work. That night, she finds a hidden door in the wall, which leads her to a parallel world where she has caring parents and all her dreams reflect the situations in her everyday life are coming true. The only difference is everybody has buttons instead of eyes. But the other world starts growing cold, asking Coraline to stay, and the price for staying may be a bit too high for her to handle. Will Coraline be taken in by this other world, and will the other world want Coraline to leave? Right off the bat, Henry Stelic's stop motion work is incredible once again. Stop motion, as I've always said, is arguably the most difficult animation technique to perform, and Selick's smooth and flowing style, previously seen in Nightmare Before Christmas and James and the Giant Peach, is still going strong. With a masterful control over color and tone, the animation easily conveys the bright, whimsical wonder of the other world, the mundanity of the real world with a washed out palette, and quickly changing horrific tone of the other world from warm and inviting to cold and confrontational. It definitely is a movie worthy of praise for its animation. Now the story for me is a bit of a trickier topic. I love the beginning. Coraline's a somewhat bratty kid, which is perfectly reasonable, as she has been roped into moving to some place that has no kids around and her parents aren't being helpful, as they are being very short-tempered and being unattentive with her. It creates an empathetic beginning, where we're happy to see Coraline get the loving and exciting world that she wants, and once the movie flips her dream into a nightmare, that empathy built up in the beginning is used to create a spooky and even colder world that Coraline is trapped in. You just feel for Coraline in this movie. Her brightness may be a little bit much for some people, but deep down she's a good brave kid who's just dealing with an extreme situation based off a relatable problem that we all can identify with. However, the third act of the movie where Coraline faces each of the nightmare versions of the whimsical set pieces, while beautiful set pieces with great atmosphere, feel off. They aren't flowing like the empathetic storyline we've had up to this point. It's Coraline the video game basically. Level 1, level 2, level 3, final boss. It loses out on the emotional heart of this scene that the movie has been building up, that Coraline must destroy her idealized dream to save the day. The theming is the strength of the movie, as it shows Coraline as a very action-focused character, who's dimensional with her good and bad choices, like us actual people. With this video game style pacing, the third act goes by so quickly, all that build-up feels meaningless. 
but even with a weaker third act, Coraline is still a fantastic spectacle of a movie, with draw-dropping visuals, much more human and empathetic characters than most other anime movies, and with a tone and atmosphere that is genuinely creepy and scary for kids. I still really enjoy watching it, even if the transfer from book to the movie left the third act lacking for me. If you haven't seen it yet, give it a watch. The price you have to pay to see it is definitely less than what Coraline had to give. I'm Coraline Jones. I've got so much to tell you. Here, thanks. Oh, do you want to pop a little gin in it, dear? Of course. 